Hi all. In this video, we are going to learn about two very important concepts of uh, modern machine learning, which are called generative versus discriminative models. So what are these two kinds of models that are prevalent in the machine learning community? So generative models are essentially those machine learning models which are based on the concept of Bayesian reasoning. So we had learned about the Bayesian parameter estimation algorithm earlier whose link is available in the description box uh, where when you make a prediction about a certain data set there you not only make the prediction but you also try to generate the underlying distributions of the prediction so it is a lot more powerful uh, than just purely discriminative models whose function is only to approximate a given function so discriminative models are totally into function approximation and essentially we have the maximum likelihood estimator and the map estimator which essentially fall in this function approximation category so you know we had learned logistic regression support vector machines artificial neural networks all of them generally lie in the domain of function approximation unless you augment that with Bayesian reasoning in which case they will become generative models. So now the reason discriminative models are uh, so much more commonly used in the machine learning community is for the simple reason that they are easy to apply. So although the discriminative model is more powerful, it gives you more information and more understanding of the given problem and the given data set but actually applying it in practice is a lot more complicated. So for example in the coin toss experiment in the Bayesian parameter estimation video we saw that calculating the heads probability for a coin using the Bayesian parameter estimation method is quite complicated whereas if you use a maximum likelihood estimation method the answer comes out in much fewer number of steps. So that's why for practical purposes usually we use the discriminative model. There is also a theoretical reason why discriminative models are sometimes more useful that is when you have outliers. So let's say you have a certain problem uh, which has a single parameter let's say x and it has two classes denoted by crosses and circles. So let's say you have one class of points which are these values of x and there are another set of values of x which lie in a different class so we can call this class 1 and class 0 so now if you want to fit this to a generative model and if the generative model uses let's say gaussian distributions so you will have let's say a gaussian distribution over here like this and you will have another Gaussian distribution over here like this and this will be perfectly classified. But now the problem happens if you have outliers. So let's say there are a few points xx towards the extreme right of your x-axis. And now if you try to fit a Gaussian distribution to your the x data points, you will get something that is, you know, kind of skewed like this because these outliers will skew your distribution and now your let's say dividing line may lie something like this because of which some of these points may be wrongly classified. In place of this generative model if you use a purely discriminative model then you will have a dividing line like this still for example in SVM you don't really care so much about uh, some of these outliers and you may just focus on these uh, you know primary parameters and then your uh, you know discriminative models are often much more robust to these kinds of outliers now one may say okay so what if we have outliers we can just remove them and then go ahead with this uh, with generative models but that is again uh, hard to do because removing outliers often requires domain expertise and making human judgments and the process is not 
प्योरली ऑब्जेक्टिव विच मे लीड टू एरर्स विच आर अनफोर्सिन सो ऑल दो जेनरेटिव मॉडल्स आर मोर पावरफुल दे गिव अस अ बेटर अंडरस्टैंडिंग बट बिकॉज दे आर वेरी हार्ड टू इम्प्लीमेंट एंड बिकॉज दे दे आर ससेप्टेबल टू हायर एरर्स ड्यूरिंग द प्रेजेंस ऑफ आउटलायर्स वी जनरली टेन टू अवॉइड दैम सो लेट्स ट्राई टू कंपेयर दिस जनरेटिव मॉडल्स एंड डिस्क्रिमिनेटिव मॉडल्स इन सम वॉट मोर डिटेल so now the goal of generative models is not just to make a prediction but to explain the underlying data in the sense of what are the statistics that the underlying data is following so and and discriminative models have a much simpler goal which is to make predictions so discriminative models do not really care much about the underlying statistical distributions to some extent they do because they use that for making predictions but not as much as uh, what generative models do so if we uh, you know take a example from real life so one can say that generative models are more like concept learning so let's say when you are preparing for an exam you can either just mug up the answers or you can just you know mindlessly practice uh, the last 5 years question papers or you can actually try to understand the concepts so if you are trying to understand the underlying concepts that would mean that you are employing a kind of a generative model whereas discriminative model would be more like use of shortcuts Uh, so shortcuts are very powerful because you know in a short amount of time you can uh, you know practice a lot more questions and sometimes you know uh, often get higher marks but in the long run uh, you know concept learning we know is more powerful but it is hard it is time consuming that's why this is a you know hard bargain that one has to make so generative model uh, because of this reason is more accurate because it has learned something about the underlying data but this is only if the model used is a correct one because if you use wrong models you may learn all kinds of wrong things and then generative models can uh, become really really problematic uh, but discriminative models are more robust to outliers and to bad models because here you are only trying to make a prediction of yes and no and so you don't really have to worry too much about presence of outliers and bad models as compared to what you need to do in the case of generative models and as you uh, might have seen in the video on deep learning a very big limitation of deep learning that it is not explainable and that is again a problem that generative models try to solve that generative models are explainable whereas discriminative models are usually a black box that you have all these parameters which you have been able to estimate but they don't really give you any understanding of why is it that certain kinds of input feature values give you a certain output so now uh, this kind of a comparison uh, may give an impression that we always have to make a choice between using generative models and discriminative models that there is some kind of a conflict that is going on over here uh, now that would be true to a large extent and most of uh, machine learning is like that where you have to make a choice between the use of generative models and discriminative models and more often than not discriminative models uh, win because uh, they are simple to use and they are more robust to uh, to many kinds of problems like outliers however over the last uh, few years there is a particular kind of machine learning which is gaining lot of traction where generative models and discriminative models come together to make something truly wonderful and these kinds of machine learning models are called generative 
adversarial networks or in short form they are called GANs. So in this generative adversarial networks what happens is that instead of generative and discriminative being becoming a choice to make you use both these models to, to create something totally new. So where can you use these uh, generative adversarial networks? The basic purpose of generative adversarial networks is to be able to generate new data points belonging to a certain predetermined class. What do I mean? So now let's say, let's take a example of an image classification problem where you have images of a human face and the images let's say of a dog face and now you want to train your algorithm to differentiate between the human face and the dog face. That would be a typical machine learning problem where you make this classification with as much high accuracy as possible. Now imagine a different kind of a machine learning problem where you not only want to segregate the given the given images but you also want to generate new images let's say belonging to human face uh, you know a human face which is actually not a real human face you know which is not captured by taking a photograph or a portrait of an actual human but something that was purely imaginary generated by a computer algorithm you must have seen videos of deep fakes which have become very popular over the last year or so where uh, you know computer scientists have been able to generate images and videos of people which are completely unreal they do not reflect actual images but they look so real to the human eye that you cannot differentiate between a deep fake and a actual real video so how do you do that so basically the first step so this is basically a two-step process which goes around in cycles. The first step is that the generative model generates new data which is fake, purely imaginary to fool the discriminator into believing that the sample generated is real. So this is the part, this is the job of the generative aspect of GANs. And then what does the discriminator do? It identifies the fake samples and forces the generator to improve. So this is a cyclical process that goes on till the generative part of the model is able to generate fake images or fake videos which the discriminator cannot separate from actual real images. So this is, uh, you know, very, very cool, definitely, because when you see these deep fake videos, it, it is truly astounding. But one has to be careful also because these kinds of deep fakes pose a serious threat to our society because uh, these videos and these images, they can be used a lot to fuel tensions, to spread fake news, to create misunderstandings between people in a very very easy manner you know fake news is already a huge problem in our society and deep fakes are going to make it even worse so so this technology is awesome from a purely scientific perspective but one also has to be very very careful in what could be the implications of these GANs so in the description box you will find a python code to implement GANs uh, in a very simple manner so do take a look write the code, see the results and enjoy the process.